In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. We have to remember one of the important things that the Orthodox Church, that our Church does for all of us, is that it brings healing into our lives. We come to Church, some of us with joy and some of us with sadness. Some of us with pain, some of us with anxiety, some with physical infirmities, some with depression, some with spiritual anxieties, with a host of issues. In all these things, we are invited to come to church. We're not supposed to leave our troubles at home, but we have built this building and this whole facility, and we have trained and taught our children to come to this place which we have consecrated for us to pray, for us to be near God, for us to hear the Word of God and to hear that Word of God give us instruction that it may enable us to become stronger, that we can somehow understand the many things that are happening in the world around us. There is a great deal of healing that the church provides its people, and certainly through instruction. The church shows us how to pray. And that's very important because even in the Old Testament, God didn't pick the people of Israel and say, okay, now that you are my chosen people, pray to me any way you want. But God was very specific and said, I will be worshiped in this way. And he gave specific directions on how he is to be worshiped. And we Orthodox Christians, as the new Israel, the new chosen people of God are called upon to be obedient and likewise to worship God within the structure that we call the divine liturgy and within the many worship services that permeate our church calendar. Even the calendar of the church itself brings us through these feasts and these fasts, the present fast that we are finding ourselves in today these two weeks, these first two weeks of August that are dedicated to the Virgin Mary because on the 15th of August we commemorate her passing away and the church calls upon us not only during Lent, the 40 days before uh, Holy Week, but also during these two weeks in August and in any other seasons throughout the year. The church calls us to pause, to interrupt the routine of our daily life, to reinvigorate our prayer, to discover the power of fasting, where with fasting we concentrate more on our soul and the thoughts of our mind than we do care about the desires of the body. Fasting is not just not eating meat and dairy products. Fasting is a reorientation of our life. It is devoting more time to prayer, more time to study of the Word of God, and it's absorbing this Word of God that it just doesn't fall on our ears, but it begins to settle in our minds and comes into our heart, where the Word of God, and this is our goal, the Word of God that is given to us through the Scriptures, the Word of God that is given to us through the sacraments of the Church, especially Holy Communion, that the Word of God transforms our life into a more Christ-like way of living. And this is one of the great healings that the church provides. You came to church this morning, but perhaps you did not realize that the, you came to church this morning to be healed, to be comforted, to be educated, to be encouraged, to find refuge, to be one with God, to converse, to communicate, and to commune with the Lord. Look at the instruction that the church gives us in the epistle reading that is found on page two of our weekly bulletin. We see St. Paul writing to the Romans, and these words are applicable to us today as well. Brethren, we who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak, and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good to edify him. So what the church is telling is something very different from what society tells us, to look out for number one, to step on other people in order for you to advance yourself and your family. But the words of Christ are very different. 
The words of Christ are saying, don't look at other people as objects of your desire or that are stepping stones for you to climb above other people. But St. Paul is telling us the word of God is, is that we should care for our brothers and sisters, to look, to embrace, to express love, to edify them, to be patient with them, to love them, essentially. And then toward the end, how, our, how St. Paul tells us, may the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify God the Father of your Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. To be welcoming, to be patient, to live in harmony. These are the instructions that we listen to. And these instructions bring peace in our hearts. Because the way of the world tells us to live our life in a very different way. The way of the world tends to make us self-centered and self-seeking, that we only wish to gratify ourselves. And then here comes the church that goes against the grain of modern culture and tells us, don't think only of yourself, but think of others. Understand that the things, the gifts that you have, the talents that you have, have been given to you not for people to praise you. Again, if you are handsome or beautiful, this was not given to you so that people may praise you. If you are talented in speaking or talented in singing, these gifts have not been given to you by God for people to praise you, but so that people may glorify God who has given you these gifts. This is what the church teaches us. We come to church to be healed and to hear the word of God, which heals us in and of itself. But there are other ways that the church heals us. We've said many times in the past that the church offers at least three important gifts to the faithful. The church offers the gospel of Jesus Christ, that God came into the world in the person of Jesus Christ so that sin and death may be overcome and that we may have eternal life in the name of Jesus Christ. That is the gospel. And we hear it, we know it, but very often we forget to live it. Wouldn't it be great? Imagine what church community we would have if we lived our life with the gospel of Jesus Christ alive in our minds and our hearts. That when someone says something or does something wrong that we forgive. That when a loved one dies that we, though we grieve and mourn their death, have this unquenchable joy that this person is alive and celebrating the true joy promised to all of us. To live our life with a faith that is burning with fire. To love unconditionally and to forgive unconditionally. To look in your eyes of your fellow parishioners in the coffee hour and to see the icon of Jesus Christ, to live the gospel as if it is a reality, not a wishful thought, not something that my Papu and Yaya taught me, but something that is alive, that is willing up into eternal life, like Jesus told the Samaritan woman. That just as we hear sometimes that coffee percolating in the morning, we can feel bubbling up inside of our souls the breath of God to walk as if our steps are being guided by Christ, not towards sin, but to love, to forgive, and to embrace. To use our mouth not to gossip, not to lie, not to say obscenities and profanities, but to use our mouth which God created, the same mouth that we use re to receive Holy Communion, that we edify one another, that we read the gospel, that we read the Psalms, that we say prayers uplifting them to God. And when we pray, others are uplifted with us. The church offers the other great gift. The second, of course, is confession. And in confession, we are healed. We come to church very times, many times weighted by the, our many sins. 
Many of us are plagued by guilt. Many of us are plagued by doubts. And we carry these things. It's kind of like having this big trunk, a sea chest, and all our sins are in there. And we carry the sea chest on our back wherever we go, even when we sleep. And we try to find different devices to escape. And we think that by going on vacation or by, by going on long trips that we are somehow bur less burdened with this sea chest of sins that, are, that is on our backs. And nothing is further from the truth. We can't run away from ourselves. So the church brings to us the, the sacrament of holy confession that we can bring this sea chest and there in the presence of God and with the assistance of the priest, the chest is open and the trunk is emptied. And in turn, having been emptied, is filled with the grace and love and forgiveness of God. A great gift, the sacrament of holy confession. Roman Catholics are the only ones that don't, they're not the only ones that go to confession. Confession is a sacrament in the Orthodox Church as well. And we cannot look down on Catholics for going for, to confession. We should look down on ourselves for not going to confession. Because it is a gift that the church is offering us, forgiveness and peace. Because whatever we say in confession, we will not be held accountable for it before the judgment seat of Christ. The third great gift that the church gives us is holy communion. Not just the icon, not just the word of God that we hear, but to be able to consume God in the pre his presence that is in the bread and the wine that is on the holy altar. To be healed by holy communion. To understand that Christ is alive in my soul and in the soul of all those other people that have received holy communion as well. And this becomes the foundation of the church. What makes us the church is not Holy Communion sitting on the altar table. What makes, us what makes us a church is Holy Communion being in each and every one of our hearts. That's what makes a church. That Christ is not just present in the altar, but what makes us a church is for Christ to be present in our hearts. And we come together to manifest the presence of Christ on Sunday morning. I pray that God will heal us as he healed the two blind men in the gospel lesson today and also the mute man who could not speak. It is interesting, if you will, if you look on page three of the gospel lesson, and I don't know if you really, if you really perceive this, it says that as Jesus passed on from there, Two blind men followed him, crying aloud, Have mercy on us, son of David. And when he entered the house, the blind men came to him. Stop for a moment and think about this. That Jesus was passing through. He's on his way to a house, and these blind men are calling out to him. Jesus doesn't stop and immediately tend to their sickness, to their infirmity of being blind. But Jesus keeps walking. And what do the blind men do? Neither do they stand and see Jesus going away, but they follow him. Jesus goes inside the house and the blind men, whether it was their house, we don't know, whether it was a stranger's house, we don't know, but the blind men follow Jesus in the house. And you can imagine these two men trying to follow Christ as these crowds were surrounding him. They were stumbling and falling, and yet they kept moving forward because they knew that God was going to heal them. And then Jesus stops inside the house after these blind men had journeyed a great way, and then he turns and says to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said to him, yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it done to you. And their eyes were opened. And again, as we've said many times, Jesus wants us to participate in our own healing, in our own salvation. He doesn't just want to cure us, but he wants us to participate in our cure. Just like you came to church today, some of us blind in sin, 
blind with anxiety, blind in self-pity, and we come to church, we follow Christ to church in order to be healed of this blindness. And then these people who were blind, they came out and proclaimed what Christ had done for them. And then again, the mute person who could not speak, Jesus heals him, and this mute goes out and proclaims the glory of God as well. We must not be blind, nor must we be mute. We must come to see the reality, the presence of Christ that is in our community, the presence of Christ that is inside our heart. And let us not be mute. Let our eyes be opened by the presence of God. And let us raise up our voices that we may proclaim everything that God has done for us, everything that God has done for our community, that we may be raised up into heaven together with all who come to know us. May God bless us and heal each and every one of us. Amen.